You're listening to Popstar Conversations, taking you inside with your favorite musical artists. Today, Chuck and I are sitting here with an incredible musician and actress, Charlotte Gensburg. Charlotte, welcome to the show. Charlotte, thank you for being here today. On this double album, you combined live and studio tracks. There are four, actually. Uh, I mean, uh, four of Beck and four of uh, other artists, so eight in total, I think. Um, I, I wanted it to be not only a live album because, because I don't want, I didn't want to put all the tracks of the live. I wanted to choose some, and then I needed. Um, it made sense if it had some images, so all the footage we we had during the whole tour, I wanted to use that. And um, if it was only a live album, it would have been, for me, something of the past, but really far away, because it's already been more than a year. So I needed something new, and it was a, a nice thing to, to feel that it was an album in between two albums. How was it working with Beck again? It was wonderful to to work with him again and it was like a follow-up on what we had done and it's always lovely to to meet with someone you you start to know quite well and he knows what I have in my head. I mean it's it's quite funny the way he writes because I don't say much but he just knows. You also collaborated with Noah and the Well and Connor O'Brien from The Villagers. Yeah, and also Conan Moccasin that um, I've m we've met again now because we're going to do a s very small concert together for Canal Plus. So it was lovely that he reinterpreted every every new song. Uh, so it's very different from the concerts I've done because it's his sound. Uh, but it's interesting. I, I really like it. You have a song in this record, Terrible Angels. It seems like you took a little bit more of a risk or into a dancier direction. With Beck, it's more... I can... I can dare things and I can have experiences and... Uh, we... He has a way of... Um, being a little experimental, which is really, that's what I like. And with him, I can do it. With other people, I want to go closer to who I am. And and uh, so softer songs and uh, are more in my range. I had fun with Beck. Um, the title, Paradisco, we had it. We had it on the previous album. We had it while we were doing uh, IRM. But it didn't fit with the rest. It was too, yeah, too different. It was kind of like a joke. So this time it was a great opportunity to be able to fit it in because it had nowhere to fit in. It, the whole point was to to have really different tracks and not a story behind nothing. Just uh, tracks like that that I had fun to to sing on and. Um, Terrible Angels is, yeah, it, it is sort of electronic and there's, there's a, s I asked Beck if I, if he could write something where I would be a little tougher because I had done the tour. Uh, it was great to have stronger songs um, with the public. I, I thought that it was really, those were either songs like the Dinan song, Just Like a Woman, to be very intimate with uh, just a guitar, or really tough songs were the, the ones where I got the most pleasure. So I asked him if, if I could try and be, try to push my voice a little, and um, that's why I had fun on that one too. Why did it take you so long to do your second record? I took it very seriously at the start. When I did 555, it was like, oh, it took me 20 years to go back to the music. It was very serious. I mean, in my head, very heavy, and uh, it was like pushing a barrier. Then once I had done it, 
I wanted to explore something different, something new, and I went to Beck. And that was a whole adventure with him. Now I feel that I, I can have fun. It's lighter. I don't have to prove anything. I mean, I haven't proven it anything and I, but it's not the point I just uh, I'm different from my father because you know people ask me oh, they compare I'm not my father and it's very good that way I have to use my own weaknesses use my uh, my own mistakes and it's easy to say you know um, profited um, use your mistakes but in a way, it's true, and that's what the touring um, gave me also, is that people are not looking for something perfect when they come to see you. They want something lively. They want to see something true. If they, I mean, I, I'm not a showwoman, so I'm not, I'm not like Madonna who's going to do a perfect show, and if it's perfect, it's great. I'm someone where if you can find my something real, that's what I'm there for. I mean, I can only be sincere. Um, so, behind the music, I I didn't have something perfect to offer. And I felt that, that, that the people who were there, they enjoyed the, I don't know, the, the fact that because it, it was not perfect, it was true. Charlotte, on the song Stage Whisper, were you referring to the stage fright that you had at the beginning of your career? I was paralyzed at the beginning, but I still wanted to go. Whereas on 555, uh, it, did, it paralyzed me to the point that I canceled everything. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't go on. Um, and I didn't see the point, I wasn't ready. Uh, this time, yes, I was scared, but I, I really wanted to do it. It appears that you are much more confident with yourself these days. For me, it's to try not to care too much, because I find that it's much easier when, of course, when you're not tense, when you don't want to uh, achieve something or, you know, don't have any flaws and try to get something the best you can. That's what I reproach myself today, is to be too... Um, like um, in French you say, um, bon élève, is to be a good student. You know, it's... Uh, I've been a good student for a long time, always, you know, doing everything that I'm told to do. It's it's a bit stupid to say this during an interview, but it's that's the way I felt. Today it doesn't mean that I'm going to push all the barriers and do whatever I want, but it's to just gain that, to be conscious of not trying too much, not trying to be too good and too polite and too... <laughs> Yeah, being comfortable with myself and just uh, being able to be myself. And yet, between your career and your life, how do you keep up with it all? I don't know, really. I think it's just adding everything. Uh, my family life is what it what is m the most important. So having a baby is was what I was hoping for for a long time. Um, so taking the time for that is very important. Um, and I've had some free time for the f past four months, so it's quite nice. So I'm not that active, but then when you add up a film plus, a mus plus the music, plus uh, a bit of fashion here and there, um, plus touring if I can, yes, it adds up. And, but it doesn't mean that I, I've done 50 films, no. At this time in your life, what type of film roles are being offered to you? Well, I was talking to my agent yesterday and she really, uh, comment on dit, démoralisé, my American agent. I, I was so depressed afterwards. She said, oh, you know, already we don't have a lot of parts in America for between 30 and 40, but when you turn 40, there's nothing left. <laughs> so oh, I thought, oh no. So I, I'll have to think about things 
by myself. <laughs> As an actress, how important is the American market to you? If I hadn't had international films, uh, I'm very, very grateful to have been offered 21 Grams and uh, I'm Not There and Lars's film and even um, Michel Gondry was French, but it was still sort of a, it was English speaking. Uh, so I've done a lot of English speaking film, which is not the American market, that I understood. And uh, I don't think I fit in the the American market. But to be able to go outside of France is very important for me. I love being able to do French films, but I, I haven't had that many great parts offered in France. I'm hoping that I'll have more or better ones or, you know, things that I really want to do. But, yeah, I'm very grateful to be able to speak English and get out. I have to say, your screen presence, it's so natural, it doesn't even look like you're acting. Yeah, that I always felt, uh, people, it, it's very kind of people to say you, it seems like you don't act, that like you're, maybe, yeah, that it's for real, but, um, oh, I forgot, but it just means that, elle est juste, it means that you're, um, you're not fake. You, uh, but that's for me that's the first step of being an actor you know that's the first thing you want to do is of course not to be fake but then you have to be better than that and so I've always felt oh if it's just to be natural I don't care <laughs> but I, I can understand that it's a compliment and I I, I won't spit on it or you know I, I'm happy if people say this <laughs> In the film Melancholia, you play the mother. How similar are you to that character? Now I like my part. At the at the beginning and when I, I was doing it, I didn't like my part. I, I thought I was so um, square. That's the whole thing about the part. She's so square that when when the end of the world happens, she's not, well, she can't cope with anything, then what she had planned, what she had tried to control, and um, I felt in a way that she was so stupid. <laughs> but it's quite nice now, it's quite nice to have a part where you, you feel, what a, you know, what a stupid woman. Because she's very much like me. She's very close to me. She's close to my fears. She's close to my panics. Um, and now I do like her weaknesses. But when I was playing them, I wanted to be heroic. I, you know, I wanted to be like in Antichrist, the, the one who's going to kill everyone. <laughs> Oh, she's the opposite. And that's why it was so interesting from Lars's point of view to ask me to do that part because it's it was like playing the nurse. Willem Dafoe was the nurse in Antichrist. Now I was the nurse in Melancholia and Kirsten was the sick one. And it was interesting that way. I mean... Uh, I also liked the le parcours, the you know, traveling from the beginning of that confident sort of confident woman to being completely naked at the end. And um, whereas Kirsten's character is the weak one at the beginning, and she becomes stronger when the end, the world ends. What is it like being a judge for the Berlin Film Festival? I'm so happy. Uh, I'm happy to be able to see films. I'm happy because I don't know Berlin very well. And I'm really attracted to what people say also, because I've heard about Berlin uh, for a long time now. Um, but it's really a place where... Well, it's not a surprise, but, you know, the the art is really interesting there. And I've met also during the tour, uh, one of the musicians had lived in Berlin and she was really, 
always going on about how what a perfect place it was but also the festival i'm just happy to be a little more mature each time you know i did the Deauville F film festival oh, i don't know when it was but it was well my son is 14 so it was maybe 16 17 years ago then i did can um that was 10 years ago maybe now i'm going to do berlin with much more confidence i can not judging films but maybe being able to judge them in my own way i'm not going to be a technical judge you know and so that's what i'm i'm happy to be my own judge to be what just the way i am you started in entertainment so young was that challenging for you it wasn't complicated when i was uh, going through it it because it, it for me it was normal i i wasn't thinking oh, i'm i'm different i didn't feel different but then that was during my early childhood then when my parents got divorced that was a little more complicated because i guess that's when i started to to do things um by myself also i started to i mean i did um lemon incest with my father and i started films when i was 12 so it helped me to maybe get my own identity and uh, not be in the shadow of my parents. Would you like your children to follow in your footsteps? I hope so, because I really, I realized how, how much freedom I was given so young. Um, my parents really trusted the people I was working with and me and there were i think it was a different time also because I, i was able to to go on to a film shoot and they weren't worried for me really sincerely they weren't worried and my father made me do lemon incest with him it was a real provocation but i mean he he wasn't a bad man at all he was wonderful and he loved me and There was a lot of um, provocation, but uh, a lot, lot of sincere love uh, that he was showing. And uh, so all of that I understood and I felt very protected at the same time. Now I'd be scared for my children because it's not the same. I have the impression that the surroundings are not the same at the time it's not the same that people are more um angrier charlotte before we end this conversation i wanted to ask you about your father's home in paris it's an incredible tourist destination to this day are you still wanting to turn it into a museum i tried for maybe 18 years i tried and then um when i it was starting to happen and jean nouvel who's this wonderful architect uh was interested and and um um uh francois uh francois henri pinot was interested also and was trying to help me everything was going quite well and then i backed off i don't know if you can say back off But uh, I, I realized that I, I didn't want it to happen. At the same time, a film was being made on him. There was a, an exhibition being made on him. Uh, I felt that I, I wanted some secrecy, something that w would still be intimate you know I'm not able to go on his grave because people are always there so I can't be I can't be myself you know with with facing that his house is the only place where it's it's like a grave so it's a big grave <laughs> and I keep it the way it was I do nothing with it It, but I'm, I'm handcuffed 
You know, it's a strange thing. Sometimes I wish a bomb would make it explode because just to help me not move on because I don't want anything to happen there. I don't want to sell it. I Maybe one day I'll have to sell it. But for the moment, I just want to keep it as it is. But in a way, it's just not to have to deal with it. Charlotte, this has been an amazing experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Charlotte, thank you so much for coming here today. Thank you again for listening to Pop Star Conversations. Be sure to click the subscribe button below and hit the red bell so that you'll be notified of our next exclusive interview. Thank you for listening to Pop Star Conversations. Please join us again for another conversation with your favorite musical artist.